Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here with some more wines. Today we're in Spain. I've got four wines from Spain um, and without any further ado, let's just set into them. First couple of Riocas and um, this one is Cantiga Creantha 2006. Creantha. Uh, Creantha means aged and um, it's, it's weird because the Spanish uh, grade their wines not according to the quality of the vineyards as they do in France but according to the way in which they've been aged so um, you get these wines, young wines, sometimes they say joven, young on the, on the label then you can move on to Creantha and the rules change from place to place but a Rioja Creantha it has, it has to have been in a barrel for a year and it has to have been in bottle for a further year after that then the next one up is Reserva, which has to be, uh, I think it's got to be three years old by, uh, by the time of release, and it's got to have had at least a year in bottle. And then you get Gran Reserva, the top one, and that's got to be at least five years old, and two of those five years have had to be in barrel. And you wonder why, what's the point of categorising wines like that? Uh, it's almost like saying um, you categorise your cooking according to how long something's been in the oven. But I suppose the idea originated uh, in uh, a place where maybe the grapes needed a little bit of uh, maturation in barrel in order to be rounded out and smoothed out, but it tended to be only the ones that were really good that could take that amount of time in barrel before they fell over. Anyway, this is Rioja Crianza, and it's 2006. Um, Cantiga is a, a bodega run by a very energetic guy called Miguel Moreno, uh, who's, who's got his, his wines under his own name, but he also makes them at, at this place here. The first thing I smell is this sweet strawberry, uh, not too oaky. I mean, some people say Rioja needs to, needs to have that whack of vanilla, but here I get that really pure, slightly pippy strawberry, and on that wild strawberry edge as well. Some plums, damsons, smells like I want to have a big glug of it. Oh, that's delicious. Um, it's quite a cool day here. Actually, it's freezing. It's about minus two outside at the moment. And uh, I've tried to warm the wines up a bit. But at this temperature, um, it's got a refreshing, uh, that, that vibrant berry edge, wild berries, this edge of spice. The vanilla does come through a bit, but it's, um, the, the, the spices are things like cinnamon, cloves and stuff like that. Some of it may have come from the wood, but I think a lot of it has come from the vineyards. Delicious wine. About nine quid. Next Rioja. Um, 2003, very hot vintage throughout Europe, and uh, Rioja was no exception. Vigna Pomal, 2003 Reserva, and this is from uh, an arm of the, uh, you know, the, the, the big group, the the, the car group Codonu, Bodegas Bilbaianas. First thing I smell, it smells, it's, it's three years older, and it smells softer, smoother, mellower. Um, it's smooth a good thing, sometimes yes, but Cliff Richard's smooth. Brown, zip-up shoes are smooth. Kenny G's smooth. There's smooth and there's too smooth. But this still smell, smells quite lively and fruity with it. There's a slightly jammier, more cooked edge to the fruit there, but still this really nice strawberry edge here. And um, if uh, it could have been in barrel for a, a couple of years, but it doesn't feel like that. There's certainly no, no hint of the oak dominating. Fruit's still really fresh. And um, I think for a year like 2003, when sometimes you get almost like flavours that are a bit too heavy, a bit too jammy, they've done pretty well in this vintage um, here. I still prefer the um, the Cantiga, but that's got a lot to say for itself too. A lot of personality, drier finish, and um, yeah, nice wine. Next two, uh, we're moving south. Uh, Vinos de Madrid, which um, it, they, they, yeah, Madrid is not been a traditionally high quality wine region. The grapes have been grown all all around it, but um, most of the stuff's been pretty basic grog. Uh, but they're trying, there's a few people who are trying to do, um, trying to take it a bit more upmarket. 
This one, Main Creantha from Bodegas Orusco. Never tried it before, never heard of them. It's 100% Tempranillo, let's give it a whirl. Tempranillo is the main grape of Rioja, and uh, I think the first Cantigo one was 100% Tempranillo. Probably the Pomal's got Tempranillo with a few other things like Graciano uh, and Mazuelo in. And so one of the things I find with the, a lot of these wines in from warmer places like Madrid, sometimes the less ambitious wines do their job better. When they try and do it, do it a really uh, big, impressive wine, they end up being too sweet, too ripe, and too oaky. This one smells okay. Yeah, there's an extra layer of warmth compared with the. Um, the pomal. It's not a jammy ripeness, but it feels like there's there's just a bit of, uh, yeah, the spice is a bit more ac accentuated. Uh, the fruit flavours, there's uh, it's, uh, got a bit of what I call the skinny character, slightly, uh, it's almost as if some of the fruit has dried up just a little bit, um, and it's it's lost a bit of freshness in the process. But they've, I don't think they've over-oaked it. It's what I call fair enough wine. Uh, no idea of the price, it's not available in the UK at the moment. Okay, but I'd take the Riocas in preference to that. Final one, um, from uh, a bodega, Senorio de Val Azul, and it's their wine Fabio. And uh, I, this, I've been on the, the company's website, because it won't, it won't tell you on the back what it's made from. This is what I've got. The variety of grape that composes this wine, different every, adds since at the end of production we select 5,000 bottles with the mixing or coupage that we consider to be the ideal one of every year. So there you go. I don't know why people spend loads and loads of money on these flash websites that, um, that look very pretty but are a complete pain to actually work with and then don't spend any money on a decent translator. Anyway, let's try the wine. I've poured it out. Yes, I have. And this 15% alcohol, and uh, I, I immediately, I stick my nose in and I get that warmth, that, uh, that, yes, there's a bit of meatiness in here too. And it's verging on the raisin. Um, I think the sort of grapes that they've got here, there probably is some Tempranillo, but I think they've got the Cabernet Merlot and a bit of Syrah uh, that they plant too. And, and there's certainly a warmth, a real rich roasted edge. Sometimes the, like the, the type of uh, flavour you get in Priorat. It's here, it almost needs, it feels like it needs something to, to fight against, to bite against, otherwise it, it could end up being just a bit too Mr. Blobby. Let's taste it and see. Well, it is very rich and forward and ripe, and for me it's overripe. I think 15% alcohol is too much. They've pushed it and pushed it. Uh, what they done, haven't done is over-oaked it. Uh, I find the oak is there. It's giving a bit of um, smoky vanilla edge, but um, it, it's, it's reasonably in balance with the rest of the wine. Trouble for me is the rest of the wine is just that little bit too big. But um, I didn't know what I was going to think of this, but um, if this is, these are the sort of wines that Madrid is doing with the, just taking that little bit more effort. It looks like the sort of area where in the future uh, we might be seeing some even greater wines coming out of it. Thank you. <coughs> Golly, I'm joking here. Thanks very much. I'm just going to go away and die now.